Hello and welcome to this week's top five. It's the week of Thursday, what, June 29th? June 29th. 2017. Yeah. Uh, I'm Christina Reese. Yeah. And this is my guest, Arthur Pena. Arthur Pena, hello. Wait, where's the camera? Which side? Uh, it's right here. Oh, okay. We're at, uh, we're at a studio in Dallas. Yeah. And we're going to talk about a project that you've done in just a little bit. Okay. Okay. Amazing. All right. So number five this week is in Houston. It's at Cindy Lissica Gallery. It's Anthony Suber. This is the last weekend that you can see this show. We just uh, ran a review by Betsy Hewitt, I think last week, about a show. He does LED. He does collage. He does things coming off the wall. As he explains it, this is about how the black body is perceived and picked apart in America today. He's addressing the, the contemporary African experience. It's this newest work. It ends this weekend in Houston. So number four this week is a summer show at the Tyler Museum of Art. Now we've already talked about one show that's there, which is Ed Blackburn, which is, we're looking forward to reading a review by Michael Blair about that this weekend. Who Michael Blair wrote that? Yeah. That's exciting. Oh yeah, he's, he's great. The show that we're talking about, however, is a group show. It's a three-person show called Making a Splash. It's Shannon Cannings, Lee Merrill, and Kelly O'Connor. Uh, three mm -hmm. artists who we, li we like, we've talked about them, we've shown their work on Top Fives before. We've reviewed them. I think it's a three. It's it's three solo shows. I don't think that this is a group show in the sense that they were collaborating or working together. I think it's just bringing in their their different work uh, for the summer, and that runs all the way through the summer. So if you're driving through Tyler, check out Ed Blackburn's show while you're there, and check out this group show. So number three this week is you. So you got work up at North Bar, and there are big billboards for this work up <coughs> in other parts. Like, do you want me to also talk about like how it came about? Sure. Justine Ludwig, senior creator of the Dallas Contemporary, um, reached out to me around April with this project that presented to her by Coach, um, in in their in their efforts to to rebrand themselves as an artist-driven um, brand that puts out designed objects. The reason why it happened in Dallas, for a, a lot of it had to do with North Park and the collection that is there, yeah, and and their and their store that's there as well. Um, but also, um, they recognize Dallas as an arts, as a thriving arts market in general. And you can, and you and I have had many discussions about what that is or how it comes and goes in your experience and my experience. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so Justine reached out to me um, through, because of my paintings, but also because of things like Vice Palace or my new project One and Only, which you know flies in artists um, from across the country. This first one was Jay Stuckey from Los Angeles, and so it just sort of worked out where I was making these paintings, um, six paintings since last September. And Coach has been uh, very tasteful in, in, in how they handled everything, and uh, it's just been really well. That's really nice cool. to know. And you got paid, I assume. Um, it, it's been nice to work with Coach, you know. Uh, it's been nice, uh, but but also I will say that the cool thing for me of having put together shows in warehouses, having you know founded multiple spaces for mu music and art, and and have shown in, in various spaces, um, you know, in Dallas and, and and throughout the country, it's cool to have work in a place like North Park uh, because. Um, I've had friends, you know, take their kids to see their work and post, you know, pictures on Instagram of them when they would never maybe make it out to a gallery show for a multitude of reasons. Um, but, um, you know, I saw my first Frank Stella painting at North Park. Yes. It's huge. Me too. And, it's, yeah, and I walked in, when I walked in North Park to see the show installed, I saw they had works on paper by Uma, Uma Baba, who is also a RISD um, graduate and, uh, and, and someone whose work I love and I had no idea that, uh, that she was even working on paper again. Uh, number two this week is the San Angelo Ceramic Invitational. Every other year they do an invitational. On alternate years they do a competition. Mm. San Angelo Museum of Fine Arts is known for its ceramic collection, its ceramic programming. Uh, the current show is uh, going to end this weekend. It, I've seen it. It's good. It's, um, it's a two-person show in one gallery. Bonnie and Linda Lynch, two sisters, one actually does works on paper that are on the wall and uh, the other does these beautiful pots and vessels and they're not particularly functional, they're just incredibly beautiful objects. And the other is Brian Malanfi, mm -hmm. who teaches ceramics at SMU. Yeah, he's a great guy. Um, when I had my stint as a visiting lecturer recently at SMU, I got to work with Brian. Um, and uh, he, his his approach to ceramics seems to be very open and um, and free, but also uh, structured in certain ways. So number one this week is finally we're getting around to naming this. It's the Polaroid Project. It's at the Eamon Carter Museum of Art, Museum of American Art, and um, this was years in the making. 
you know, Polaroid met an unhappy ending uh, going into bankruptcy because it was mismanaged. But um, that you know, they've been building a collection of artists who've worked with Polaroid film for years and years. This is about the intersection of art and technology and the use of their cameras. It, there are hundreds and hundreds of photographs, some of the large format, small format, the most innovative use of the film. Mm. Did it have uh, Lucas Sumaras? Absolutely, in it? yeah. Oh. There's like three of his yeah. pieces. Gosh, damn, they're good. Yeah. It's beautiful, and because it's the Eamon Carter, and because they're so renowned for their photography collection, yeah. and because John Rohrbach is such a, also a great curator and was, was had a hand in this, it's just so beautifully done. What's interesting about the Eamon Carter to me is that the, all the major photography shows I feel like I've seen, I've seen there. Yes, and there's a reason for that. I mean, I, I remember it had to be in the early 2000s at least. Uh, I'm sure maybe middle 2000s where I saw the Avedon show. Well, probably one of the Richard Avedon shows. There's an Avedon show up right now. Yeah. Or no